sign language, it's my first language, and you're going to be using spoken English. Since you don't know sign language, I'm going to sign to the interpreter. She's going to watch me sign and interpret that in English for, for what I'm saying. And then she's going to take your spoken English and interpret that into sign language so that we can have a natural conversation. Okay. Great. Well, I'm Daniel. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. My name is John. John, where are you from? I'm from North Island. I grew up there. And then I went to college at, at MTID, RIT, Rochester, in New York. So that college is where I met my wife. And then we moved to Illinois. And we raised a family here in Illinois. I moved to Illinois in 93, so that 12 years, I'm figuring out the math. Hang on. Um, let's see. 19 years. 19 years I've been here. Well, 19 years is a long time. Do you like Illinois? Well, I mean, now, yes, I enjoy it. But when I first moved it, I hated it here. I hated Illinois. It's just in the middle of nowhere. All the towns are just completely boring. I'm from the East Coast, and everything is, there's so much activity going on, it's a lot, it's a lot more fun. But here, it's really boring. After 19 years, I'm used to it, so, yeah. So where are you from, Dan? Um, I'm originally from Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm born and raised. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, and then I moved to Texas and back to Utah and ended up here. I moved around a lot, but I definitely know. Where in Texas did you live? I lived in Corpus Christi. It's in the southeast. Oh, Corpus Christi, my wife, her family, well, her father's family is from Austin, Texas. So, oh, yeah, I like Austin, you? the Pete Capitol building. Yes. It's pretty unique. It's, it's a lot. Different. It's very different. So, um, when you were in college, did you work? Did you do any activities or anything? I was an RA in college. That was my job. A resident advisor for the dorm. So, I was responsible for the floor activities and games and that sort of thing. And if the fire alarm went off or any kind of conflict or crisis, I had to manage that. So after I graduated, I started working with oh, the Sunshine Sunshine Theater Group. There was three deaf performers and three hearing actors, and we traveled all over the country. So. For two years, we traveled, and then after I finished that, I started a family. I started looking for work. Perkins Family? Oh, at the Perkins Family Restaurant, that's where I worked. I was a chef. It was a really lousy job, I didn't really like it, so I decided to move. Illinois. And again, I needed work, so I started looking for work in Illinois. And I was a janitor. That was another lousy job, so I quit that and I moved to Oh, data entry. Data entry. Um, it was a lot better because I got to sit in an office rather than clean up a bunch of garbage stuff. But it was still really not what I wanted to do. So I started looking again and I found another job in the Center for Independent Living. And they helped deaf individuals with different kinds of services and advocacy. So I worked for deaf. And now I work for Illinois Deaf and 
Wow, you've definitely experienced a lot. Um, it's amazing where your life can take you, like how your life pans out. I'm sure when you were in college, you never thought you'd be working for the Illinois Black and Hard Hearing Commission, so it's pretty cool. Because I know in my life, like I'm young and haven't really experienced a lot, but um, I was in theater growing up and I knew I wanted to be an actor my whole life. And then over time, like I did a lot of jobs. Yeah, you're, you're very young. You're still young. Yeah, I know, but. I mean, you have to think about things because I remember like different jobs I've had, like being a lifeguard and working in kitchens and hospitals and nursing homes. And, and I never thought I'd become an interpreter, so it's really interesting how my life has gotten to this point. Who knows where it'll be in 15 years, even five years from now. You're right, it might change again. So you always, there's always opportunities to work. To look forward to and be satisfied with. So, are you going to college right now? Are you working? What are you doing? I'm, uh, I have a part time job at the Shedd Aquarium, but I'm a full time student, so I, uh, I'm a full time student here at Columbia. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and you're an interpreter? Or an interpreting student? Wait, wait, wait. So, you don't know sign? How could you interpret? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm a Spanish language interpreter, not sign language. So I don't know any sign language, but I'm studying it in Spanish language. Oh, okay. Now I understand. I was I really misunderstood because at first when I saw interpreter I imagined sign language. But right, yeah, there's another other other languages that you can be an interpreter for. So wow, that is really fascinating. So how did you get involved in that? Um, well, I lived in South Texas, and there's a lot of people there who speak Spanish. Right. right a lot of I picked Spanish. it up and studied Spanish in high school, and it's pretty good. And I thought maybe I could work in the UN someday. My grandpa and aunts and uncle work for the government, so maybe I'd follow a student and myself to do that as well. The UN maybe something. That is really interesting, so I'm curious. What well, co which college do you go to? I'm a student here at Columbia. Columbia, okay. Do you know that Columbia has sign language interpreting program? Did you know that? Yeah, I know they have a program. I've seen their students around on campus. They interpret events and stuff. So when you're watching those interpreter or those students, are you interested in that? Maybe learning sign language, becoming an interpreter? Well, I think sign language is fascinating, so but I haven't really thought about studying it or making a career out of sign language. I'm pretty set with my Spanish, so I mean it's, it's intriguing, of course, but I don't know. Sure. But I want you to think about it. I mean, really, when you look at an audience at the audience, and there's a, a woman interpreter. And really, there's nothing wrong with women interpreters, but there's not a lot of male interpreters. So maybe you could become a Spanish interpreter as well as a sign language interpreter. You could be a trilingual interpreter. Have you ever thought about something like that? No, not at all. They have trilingual interpreters from Spanish to ASL. Is the sign language the same? Even if I'm speaking Spanish? Yes, yes. In fact, in Texas, they're doing, a, what do you call it, a study, it's a research, they're observing tri trilingual testing. So for English, Spanish, and sign language. And there's a lot of because there's a lot to the process. So if you have a strong background in Spanish, why not take advantage of that and add to your experience? That is really intriguing now that you mention it. Um, maybe I'll look into that. I mean, I've never thought about studying sign language, but yeah, I think it would be hard. So I, maybe I'll think about that for the future.
Do you have experience involved with theater? Yeah, um, I did theater growing up, and I knew I always wanted to be an actor until I decided to become an interpreter. So. Yeah. 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 That could be your advantage. Because the interpreters for sign language, they tend to have a lot of expression. So if you have some experience working with theater, that would help you a lot. So just think about that. I mean, maybe you have that possibility to pick, maybe you have the capability of picking things up quickly. Yeah, I'll definitely think about it. Maybe I'll take that ASL1 class in the fall. <laughs>